Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Cessna 172 G1000 version. Now I actually have real world experience in this aircraft, so it's kind of nice that you know, I finally get to kind of compare them side by side. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first things first, um, we're sitting here, this is uh, beautiful Alaska, um, we're basically not quite in the middle of nowhere, but we're a pretty good thing. Our actual flight today is going to basically be taking us from Passy all the way over to Sitka, which is, uh, is about a 48 nautical mile flight. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds, and uh, we'll cheat a little bit here and there kind of a thing. So first things first, uh, when you first climb in this airplane, the first thing you got to do in the real world is you got to grab this little lever under the seat, and you got to basically go one of those things real quick in order to get yourself so you can actually sit in the seat. Uh, fun fact, uh, when it took off one time, that little pin that holds it in place wasn't there. So I went, as soon as we went accelerated, and you're going, oh God, trying to reach out to the controls directly in front of you. Of course, in the normal real world, you have your little GPS that you stick on there. You're probably on your phone calling in the weather and everything like that, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Let's go ahead and uh, walk you through the process. So first things first, uh, everything's uh, pretty much ready to go. I've got my little headlamp on here. Normally we use a red one, we would use a white one because it's kind of dangerous. We're gonna come over here where it says master and we're gonna go ahead and set alt and battery on. As soon as you do that, this display is gonna come on. In the real world, it's not this bright and also doesn't work right away, which is kind of a neat little fact. Now I can actually come in here and click this button a bunch of times to shut off all those warning alerts. And of course, if this little inset bothers you, you can actually come over here and press the off button and go ahead and shut that off. Once that's done, um, basically all we need to do is get this thing ready to rock. We're gonna make sure that our fuel tank is set to both. We're gonna make sure our fuel shutoff valve is in, the in position. We're gonna go ahead and make sure our little mixture control handle is in, and we're gonna push our throttle all the way in as well. Now you're probably sitting here going, wait, what? Watch this. So in this particular aircraft, we're fuel injected. So our method of priming the aircraft is a little unique. Normally what you would do is you go ahead and push this all the way in with everything kind of all set so that you're ready to go and flip on the fuel pump. As soon as you do that, you'd feel it, hear a little noise in the engine, you'd shut it back off. Now the engine is actually completely primed. So what you would actually do here is you'd pull the mixture control back out, and then you'd go ahead and crank the engine while holding onto the throttle and the mixture control at the same time. As soon as the engine catches, you'd have to do one of these kind of little dances. Now because this is flight simulator, we don't have to worry about that as much. But we'll go through the procedure anyway. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip on my bacon lane and just let everybody around us know, hey, we're about to get started, watch out. Since it is pretty dark this time of day, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my navigation lights are also turned on. Don't ever touch the strobe light until you get on the runway. They're really, 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 really bright. Okay, so pull this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank the engine at the same time and shove that in really, really, really hard. I'm just gonna bop that button as soon as we're ready. Hey, get back here. <laughs> it's always fun to play with that game, right? Okay, so normally what we do is we stick the keys, which we would've kept in the thing. We set it to both and we just crank. Ready, set, go. And that would be it. And now we're just going to go ahead and set that to about 1,000 RPM, which is going to keep those spark plugs from accumulating anything they're not supposed to get in them. And now again, this Cessna I started on was actually carbureted, so we had this cool little priming handle, and you sit there and crank it for 20 seconds, and it would go rah, 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 and it would never actually go right away and forget it during the winter. You never get the darn thing started. Okay, now that the engine's all set up, uh, what we do like to do is we like to pull the mixture control handle out just a teeny tiny bit so that we don't accidentally, you know, again, get too much lead on those spark plugs. I'm going to go flip on my avionics buds. Of course, when you do that, it goes, boo -boo. we don't get that sound, which is kind of a bummer. But again, it's all different depending on what aircraft you have. And you can see my GPS has been pre-programmed and everything like that. If we wanted to do it manually, we could press the direct button. In the real aircraft, of course, you go to the flight pan page and go nuts as far as dialing in individual pieces. You could also come over here and like pick everything that you need to pick and stuff like that. Again, we're keeping this pretty simple for today. So the first thing I want to do, of course, with any flight, is you want to go double check what the weather is. I've already checked it. It looks pretty good today. We're going to be taking off with a runway that's conveniently located directly behind us, which never happens. And uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to switch my CDI to going to be our GPS. I'm just going to click CDI twice, and now you can see this is what our course is going to be taking us on today. After I've done that, I'm pretty much all set. We'll go ahead and set our starting altitude, which is going to be about 4,000 feet. Let's come over to this knob and crank this a few times to 4,000 feet. Uh, next thing we like to do, of course, is I like to flip on the flight director myself. Some people like to flip on the navigation, different stuff. Again, I can put a navigation mode. I can even go vertical speed. And we can go ahead and set my vertical speed up to about 700 feet per minute and now everything is pretty much exactly as I would have as if this were the real plane. So now I'm going to kind of look around make sure I'm not going to chop anybody up into pieces. I'm going to ignore this little fellow here as uh, anybody who's watched me before knows um, I've burned this guy over about 400 times. I just you know I just don't have the time man. I just don't have the time. 
So that's all pretty much all set to go. We'll do a run up once we get a little bit closer to the actual runway itself. Don't forget to arm your emergency system. Oh, this is starting by battery. I'm sorry. I was looking for this switch over here, but I can see that it's already armed, so we're good to go. I always make that mistake, but that's okay. Okay, flip on our taxi light and let everybody around us know, hey, we're going to get rolling. Go ahead and release the parking brake, and let's chop this guy up. Come get some. All right, looking pretty good. Normally, what we'd want to do, of course, is uh, call the fact that we're uh, cruising down the runway here. Bring ourselves over here. It's about 7.30 in the morning, and our uh, total flight time today is going to put us right about 26 minutes. But uh, we'll probably skip a little bit of that to kind of get to the action part. This is a really gorgeous flight, though, so it's almost worth it to kind of fly through the whole thing. Kind of come right up to here to the end of the runway. I'm going to go ahead and hold the brakes. Love this plane. This is, it's just, it's so easy to fly this plane. All right, go ahead and hit the brakes. We're going to go do our run up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my mixture control handle is pushed all the way in. I'm going to look behind me to make sure I'm not going to blast anybody with a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and push my throttle forward until I get to about, mm, we always did 1800 RPM, but it completely depends on you know, what time of day it is. And again, it takes a little bit of practice to get exactly 1800. Looks pretty good. Now what we would do is we come over here to our little key. We click it to the left. See how we lost a little bit of RPM. Click it back to the right. It should come back up. Then we click it all the way to that position. It should lose the same amount of RPM. Then we click it back up to both. And we go ahead and cut the throttle. Now on the carbureted version of this engine, it will go... But unfortunately for us, we're fuel injected, so we don't have to worry about that. Bring us back up to 1,000 RPM, and we are ready to rock. So since we're going to take off, I'm going to go ahead and flip on my landing light. Again, be careful with that thing. It's tremendously bright. Since it is nighttime, it's always a good idea to flip on your strobe light as well as soon as you taxi onto the runway. All right, give it a little bit of gas. Again, time to do our get ready for takeoff checklist here. We're gonna make sure that we have our transponder activated. I'm press transponder, set it to the altitude mode. Depending on what airport you're at, you may not be allowed to do that. They'll actually really, really appreciate the fact that you turned that on before you started taxiing. But again, it depends. This is a pretty short runway, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and use one click of flaps over there. You can see them descending right now. And now, like we do in all of our flights, we always like to grab ourselves a timer. And we're gonna go ahead and press that timer as soon as we give the thing full power. Let's swing over to the start button. So all I'm going to do is push the throttle all the way forward. There's really no science. By the way, some of you are probably going, hey, what about the trim? Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that in this particular aircraft. But if you actually take a look down at your little trim wheel, theoretically, your trim should be set perfectly in that little line right there, just like that. But it completely depends on your center of gravity for your particular aircraft. So kind of keep that in the back of your head before you start getting too carried away. And the reality is the trim is just there to make it so that you can actually pull the controls back. All right. Release the brakes, apply full power, and start our timer. And we are on our way. This aircraft is going to accelerate pretty slowly. <laughs> like, I remember the first time trying going, um, it's an awful lot of noise, but I hope it's worth it. We're just going to go ahead and uh, compensate for the aircraft jerking around a little bit. We do have some wind today. We're not going to be lifting the front wheel up until we get to about 55 knots. And by front wheel, I mean literally just lift it off the ground like that far and just hold it. When the aircraft's ready to come up on its own, it just goes whoosh, the next thing you know, you're airborne. Now, a common mistake that newbies make is they're going to go ahead and reach right for that flap lever as fast as they can. If you do that, you're going to suddenly find yourself with a lot less lift than you had just a moment earlier. So if I actually look up, there's a very serious looking mountain. I do not recommend doing anything less than your VX, which you can see is about 67 knots, with that flap down until uh, we get clear of it. Again, the visibility will improve as our flight climbs today. Don't try to pull past it. Ideally, you want to be doing about 62 knots if you're doing a nice short field takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and start hanging gently to the right. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up that notch of flaps once we go ahead and get this. Uh, welcome to Alaska, folks. It's uh, an absolutely amazingly large area. And uh, unfortunately, so much of this is untapped. And, and, you know, it makes me wonder about, like, you know, the Great Frontier. Uh, we could have done this flight up in Siberia, but I figured, hey, we'll go ahead and get ourselves a few little mountains as well in the background. Once you've gone ahead and got through that initial climb out, don't forget to bring up your notch of flaps. And don't forget to bring your nose up. And you want to be doing right around 75 knots. It's kind of the sweet spot. Keep in mind, as you start getting progressively higher with this aircraft, that 75 knots is going to slowly work its way downwards. Looking off in the distance, I can see some really serious looking clouds. So unfortunately for us, we are not in an instrument flight plan today. So that should make things a little bit more exciting than it really needed to be in a video like this. But that's okay. What I'm doing now is I'm basically cranking on my trim, trying to get it to a good position. Now we're ready to go ahead and let the automatic pilot do the rest. 
I'm gonna go ahead and slap on the AP mode. Since we set everything up previously, the aircraft is just going to start flying itself. It's gonna take us up to 4,000 feet. It's also gonna go ahead and get us to a position where we're gonna be perfectly lined up with our little course line, which is gonna be there. Now this aircraft climbs usually at its basically 75 knots, like I said, and it's going to be climbing at full power the whole time. Now, one cool trick you can do with this autopilot on this version is we can actually go to flight level change mode and we can actually set the speed we want the aircraft to climb at. So if we want to, we can set in 75 knots and it'll climb at our perfect speed. Now in the big jets, this doesn't work well. You know, it's a little bit wonky and a little bit back and forth and you're getting your neck snapped all over the place when you're doing it. So you wanna be kind of cautious with that. Now those are some pretty nasty looking mountains up in the distance, but fortunately we're gonna be well above their altitude. So we're not gonna have to worry about it too much during this flight. So you can see we're climbing at our perfect speed. We're climbing at a perfect altitude. Everything about this is basically in great shape. Uh, we're not gonna worry about the red handle until we cross 3000 feet. Now, as I've said in previous videos, that red handle is best controlled by letting the computer do it for you. Although this is one of the few times we can do it by hand because we have access to a tachometer that is not a constant speed propeller, which actually works really, really well for us. All right, about 2000 feet. Yes, this is about as fast as this thing climbs on a good day. Looking out the window, looking out back. It's also a very noisy plane. Like, I mean, a, the fun one too that I always thought was entertaining with this aircraft when you'd actually fly it was the fact that, uh, you know, your vent was basically this hole up here that you had a little thing you could crank on. You also had a thermometer in the old ones you could sit here and during the day be grabbing this little thing and basically putting it in front of your face because the sun is so much brighter when there's no haze to absorb the energy. You can see we have a gigantic lake here. You can imagine people sitting in their little kayaks and early this time of day, just kind of cruising around in it. You know, here we are, of course, uh, ruining this wonderful silence with this, you know, nice loud propeller as we basically zip over everybody's heads. Once we get to the top of climb, we'll kind of skip the trip and uh, take us right over there to the end there. Just want you guys to see that even at 75 knots, we're not getting the world's fastest climb. We could, of course, climb a little bit steeper. One really slick trick, by the way, with this G1000 I always like to play with, is you can actually come in here and you can turn on the VY just by pressing this. And now you can see that it actually suggests 74 knots. It's like, oh, okay, fine, be that way. It's so I can just click that one notch and now we're doing 74 knots. And again, it's just sort of a slick little trick you can do with this aircraft. Now we're climbing at maximum performance basically. And yeah, maximum performance ain't much. Again, it's a Cessna 172. We're pretty darn well loaded here. I'm noticing that we're carrying a full tank of gas in both sides right now. It's about 50 gallons total. Uh, it's gonna be about 300 pounds of fuel. It's gonna be like 140 kilograms somewhere in there. It's quite a bit of fuel for something this small. And again, we store all of that in our wingtips here. We've got nothing in the middle so we don't have to worry about that all right we're just going to kind of hit once we hit 3000 we'll go ahead and kind of let it loose now this is when you're like aren't the lighter planes actually climbing quicker than this yeah but the lighter planes can't hold four people on them now another neat thing too is with the earlier 172s you actually did not have the ability to carry four people at the same time as fly a pretty good distance the later ones they actually put a larger engine ah we've just crossed 3000 feet let's go ahead and get that mixture set up so to do this, there's two ways. You can use the button that they give you built in, or if you prefer, you can do it by hand. So what you would do is basically take a look at our current RPM. Now I'll pull the mixture out a little bit. Do you see how the RPM went and zipped up? That's because the air fuel mixture is now cleaner. Go ahead and pull it back a little bit. See how we're at 2390? Go ahead and pull it back. No, 24, we're getting closer. Keep leaning that mixture out a teeny tiny bit. See we're at 2410, we're about to peak. 2420. 2420 is the sweet spot. Pull it out a little more, a little more. Yeah, so basically, oh, did you see how our gallons per hour just shot down? 20 for, oh, too much. Did you see how once we got to the place where the mixture was completely riched out, that basically our RPM actually started to drop? That's because now there's not enough fuel for the engine to run on its own. So in this case, I'm gonna push the mixture control just a teeny tiny bit in, and you can see that I'm getting maximum horsepower out of this thing right now. Like you can't do any better than this. Now the cool thing is if I push the button for Microsoft, they shove it in and give you way more fuel than you need, but it's still better than if I left it alone, because look at how much power we just lost. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that button and let it do it itself. 
All right, we're hitting our climb position. Everything's looking pretty solid. Those are pretty serious looking mountains over there in the distance, but I don't think it should be anything too, too dangerous for us. Yeah, one of the things we learned about this is you never want to climb more than 10% of your total flight time. So if our flight was a half an hour, you wouldn't want to be climbing more than three minutes, which only gets us a few thousand feet. Just kind of neat how that works. All right, let's go ahead and set up ourselves for cruise. Again, you want to check your POH to determine your best. Personally, I'm a 2400 or 2300 kind of guy. You could go as high as 2500, but that's being awfully mean to the engine. Again, until this aircraft has picked up enough speed to really, really get ripping, you're not really going to be able to consistently be able to read this particular speed. We should be able to cruise at about 116 true. Keep in mind, after you get up to your cruise speed, you're gonna to have to reset your mixture because you're going to be changing your engine power. So we'll just continue accelerating here. Everything's looking pretty darn good. All right, pretty good. We'll go ahead and start reducing power now. Again, we're going for about 2,500 RPM is the absolute maximum cruise you'd ever want to fly this thing at. 2,400 is more common, but again, if you're at higher altitudes, your engine's going to have to be turning a lot faster in order to safely keep you, you know, going basically. Again, we're using the GPS to kind of guide us towards our destination. You can see the absolute, you know, lovely morning sigh here. We basically get on the other side of this mountain, so then we go ahead and land. I'm going to back my throttle a teeny tiny bit more. Again, it's a bit of a battle because as you accelerate, the engine accelerates too. Now that I'm at my correct RPM, I'll clean up the mixture a little bit, which should give me a little tiny boost of RPM. But other than that, we're good to go. See you at the top of descent. All right, we've cleared those uh, big scary mountains. We had to actually gain a little bit of altitude there in order to get across it. Uh, one of the neatest things, by the way, is for those of you who do have VR flight simulators out there, is these mountains are just amazing to fly through. So anyway, we've hit our top of descent. It's time to start going down. Our runway that we're going for is right here on the corner. You can't quite make it out from this distance, uh, but trust me, it's there. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up our new desired altitude. We're gonna be going down to uh, about 1,400 feet or so. Looks pretty good, we'll stop at 15. I'm going to press the vertical speed button and I'm going to select 500 feet per minute. And now I'm just going to go ahead and manipulate the throttle a little bit to try to keep our speed at about the same speed the whole way down. Now, if you're a real pro, you use your air speed. If you're a super pro, you use your ground speed as far as trying to keep a constant speed. The indicated airspeed, as you know, changes as you change altitude. So we're just going to go ahead and start descending. Ah, now you can see the runway very clearly. It looks like we're going to be going a little bit too close. Again, that mountain was a little on the big side so it made it very very challenging so for this particular landing we're going to be landing on 28 which is going to be this runway kind of going in this direction like this so to do it safely what we're going to do is we're basically going to cross right here across the middle do a left downwind left base and go ahead like this we could of course uh, do a direct approach which would give us the ability to kind of fly straight in like that but you never know what kind of traffic is up flying up here in uh, sitka alaska so you want to kind of be cautious about that as well I'm gonna go ahead and reduce speed a little bit here. And again, we don't wanna be coming down. I'll go ahead and increase my vertical speed, but I'm gonna increase my regular speed as well. Let's get it going about a thousand feet per minute. Should get us diving pretty quick. These mountains are terrifying. If this weather were a little worse, this would not be a recommended flight. We just got incredibly uh, lucky today. Again, like I said, I'm playing with the real world's weather right here. So it kind of surprises me that the weather is not worse than it could be. But again, I'll take what I can get kind of a thing. Now, this is kind of a fun mission too, because for those of you who are familiar with the older version of Flight Simulator, this was one of the original um, missions you could actually fly in you know, landing here. I remember the first time I tried it, I was got kind of a noob at some of these things. Let the plane get down to like 35 knots before the thing stalled and hit the runway. But incredibly, it still gave me credit for the mission, so I'm not complaining too much. All right, on descent, a couple things you want to kind of keep in mind is the fact you don't want you to let your engine cool down too quickly. Uh, the safest way to do so is simply keep your RPM relatively high. Again, you don't want to be descending in the yellow region unless you're in a situation where, of course, the uh, air dent, there's no wind whatsoever, in which case, go as fast as you want. Uh, the other thing you want to watch out for, too, is uh, as you descend, anything past 500 feet per minute in a non-pressurized aircraft is going to make your ears hurt like crazy. So kind of keep that in the back of your head that, you know, you do have passengers on these aircraft. So this incredibly aggressive descent that I'm doing right here in order to save a little bit of time would have been tremendously uncomfortable. All right. So one thing I like to do with this aircraft, and this goes true for pretty much any aircraft, is I actually like to set my heading bug to be at the heading of the runway I'm flying on. The reason I like to do this is it gives me a clean picture of what's going on here. You can see that the runway we need to land on is this way, but we're approaching the runway like this. So if we actually want to be a little safer, we can come over this way so we get a cleaner turn. But basically what's going to end up happening is we're going to cross the runway, go da 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 and basically come swinging around. Actually, going to bring us even lower than that. We'll do about a thousand feet. Should be plenty of altitude. I can see the runway 
said very clearly, as always, you'd want to go ahead and let everybody know where you are when you're coming and all that other good stuff. Air India traffic red, six, four, four miles east, 2000. Nope, runway 29. I'm glad that I checked with myself. I had a feeling that that angle was a little bit tighter than I thought it was. Keep in mind, 29er does not mean 29er. It just means it's closest to 29er. All right, looks pretty good. And normally, like I said, what we do is we cross field. We check the flag, which again, we don't need to because the weather observation service told us what the wind is. But again, you do it in the real world. Again, keep an eye out for other traffic. There could be people down here for all we know. I'm gonna start reducing speed very aggressively as we start getting ready for landing. All right, landing a Cessna 172 is not a project. For those of you who are familiar with the Cessna 152, you've already had plenty of practice landing aircraft like this. The key element is uh, just keep an eye on your speed. Uh, when you do the deadly corner, when you're taking that kind of left base turn, remember, don't be dropping your flaps down too early. Don't be dropping them down too late, or you could get yourself all sorts of uh, nasty situations very, very quickly. So I'm just going to let ourselves descend. We'll go ahead and start thinking really, really quickly here. We're going to double check to make sure our mixture is set correctly, especially on another 3,000 feet. We're going to go ahead and flick on our landing lights when we come on to our final approach there we're gonna make sure on our fullest gas tank we've been using both gas tanks uh fun fact in the real world it doesn't work that way it uses one more than the other every single time there's just it, there's no way around it kind of a thing all right beautiful sitka alaska in case you want to take a quick little peek I actually have a couple friends who've actually been up here. Ah, uh, there's all those kayaks and boats I was talking about earlier. Make sure your barometric pressure is set properly, by the way. Last thing you want to do is get a nasty surprise when you realize you're actually higher or lower than you wanted to be. And again, we want to go ahead and cross the runway midfield, and then we're going to take that left base, and then we're going to take the left and everything else, and off we go. Fun trick, by the way, you can actually zoom in excessively close, so you can see very clearly exactly where you are and what you need to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and disengage the automatic pilot there. I'll take care of the rest from here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get everything started here. Now, one of the great things is I know the runway is facing opposite to niner. So if I actually want to go square of the runway perpendicular, all I have to do is rotate the aircraft like this, and I can see clearly that the runway is in that position. All right, in the traffic pattern, you want to go ahead and put yourself one notch of flaps down at all time. I generally like a speed of around 85 knots, but uh, 75 is perfectly acceptable as well. It depends, again, exactly what you're doing, how busy the traffic pattern is, everything like that. Try not to gain or lose too much altitude. Okay, we are now parallel. This is our downwind leg. We want to start preparing for landing. Start playing with your flaps. Get everything nice and ready to go. I hate the way the trim works in this. It's just not how that normally works. Flip on the landing lights. We are now a beam the numbers. Go ahead and pull the throttle back to zero. Drop down your second notch of flaps and get ourselves about 500 feet per minute descent. It's not going to be a complete throttle pull out. In the real world, usually what you're going to be doing is setting your flaps to, uh, it's about 20 degrees, a speed about 75 or 70. Keep scrolling down, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. We're looking for about 45 degree angle off the end of the runway. I'm gonna get ourselves a little bit closer to 500 feet per minute, and a little bit closer to 65 knots now. Look out the window one more time, looks pretty good. Again, you don't wanna be doing aggressive turns in a traffic pattern if you can help it. We don't have to worry about missed approach, we don't have to worry about any of that. This isn't an instrument approach, this is a conventional one. Bring our nose up, I'm getting a little carried away here. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. All right, we're beam the numbers. I should be able to look out the back window. It looks gorgeous. We're gonna pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. All right, turn final. I'm gonna go ahead and put that last notch of flaps down right when we're perfectly lined up with the end of the runway. This is a dangerous corner for any aircraft, so it's really critical you give yourself that extra little bit of thrust as you put that last notch in. Last notch of flaps is down. We are now on final. We are a little low, but not bad. But again, again, you're looking for about 65 knots. It's kind of a sweet speed here. As far as this aircraft versus the real world aircraft, the real world aircraft, it, it, it's delayed. <laughs> this aircraft is very sensitive compared to the real one. All right, there we go, about 65 knots. We're getting a little bit high. Ideally, you want to be hitting the numbers as opposed to the giant touchdown zone, which is the uh, giant white squares. We don't need to hit that. So again, have your hand in that throttle the entire descent here. Uh, Gumfels, I'll go ahead and check to make sure our landing light is on. Yep, I flipped that on a little while ago. Line ourselves nicely. We're getting a little slow, but that's okay. All right. Once you're about to this spot, you're going to want to take the throttle and pull it all the way back to zero. Line yourself with the big old number at the bottom. As soon as you get close to the ground level, the aircraft, when the aircraft starts to sink, pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit, and we're down. And that's it. 
And that's really all there is to uh, flying a Cessna 172 G1000. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at this as well with the conventional Cessna 172. Again, it's basically the same, except you have a GPS that you have to basically, you know, kind of babysit sort of a thing in order to reliably control it. But other than that, uh, taking this thing back to the landing spot will be pretty straightforward. You're just going to taxi it on over. Don't be too aggressive with the controls. Uh, don't forget the fact that you uh, want to turn off the light that's going to blind everybody. Don't forget to shut your strobe light off. Again, this has been a pretty, pretty relaxing flight. Got us there to our destination pretty effectively. It's always neat to see what kind of traffic is sitting here. I actually have real world traffic and local traffic turned on. So it's always kind of fun to see if anybody decided to take this flight since it is uh, so universal. Go ahead and hold the brakes a little teeny tiny bit there. All right, gonna go swing. I don't know why somebody decided to put the light in the middle of the taxiway, but oh, I'm, not, I'm not the guy who designs airports. All right, looks pretty good. We'll go pick a random parking spot. I like that one over there. Uh, it's looking pretty good so far. All right, the brakes, nice and gentle. We'll line ourselves up right over here. We'll do our shutdown procedure. It's really simple. All right, looks good. And the brakes. Delightful. Parking brake set, even though I've never set a parking brake in one of these planes. Okay, so uh, first thing we want to do is we want to shut off all the lights we don't need. Shut our avionics off. And then you just go ahead and pull the red handle out. That's all there is to it. Enjoy, folks.